here to discuss. Former Utah Congressman and Fox News contributor Jason Chaffetz, editor and publisher of American Greatness, Chris Buskirk, and former Bernie Sanders national staffer and founder of the Teslin Figaro Communications Group, Teslin Figaro. All right, Jason, let me start with you because you of all people around the table really understand the kind of intricacies of this whole process around funding for the border wall, the national emergency. There's so much to say, but just give us your take on where we are right now. I'm glad the president is finally standing up to do something about the border and illegal immigration. In my lifetime, I haven't seen anybody who's as laser focused on that. The problem is, as you say, the establishment Republicans don't really want to solve this. They have not served the president well. Uh, well, they did not put a good bill in front of the president. I understand why he signed it. Mm -hmm. I think there was a better, smarter way to do it. Uh, but nevertheless, the president needs backup and support to truly solve the illegal immigration problem. But Chris, a lot of conservatives have, push, have pushed back and said, well, look, he, fine, they actually quite like the emergency declaration, at least it shows he's fighting, but he shouldn't have signed that bill because actually it prevents him, you know, the small print, the fine print says it yeah. prevents him from doing the things that they want to see happen. Yeah, no, that's right. It's actually, the more people read this bill, the worse it gets. And I mean, this is a classic example of one of these bills where you have to read the bill or you have to pass the bill to find out what's in the bill. You know, there's just, there's one thing that people did, don't realize and that nobody in the West Wing seemed to tell the president, which is that Section 224 of this bill provides for what is basically a de facto amnesty for anybody who will uh, currently who or potentially could house an unaccompanied minor which would be everybody because there's no criteria for it. So you just say, yeah, okay, fine, I could do that. Uh, and then no, but not that person and nobody who lives in the household. That's in the language of the bill. And so what President Trump did is he promised a wall. He actually signed a massive amnesty. Do you agree with that? In large part, I really do. Uh, the president would have been better served to actually take the continued resolution from last year and on a page and a half, yeah. Just go ahead and say, all right, let's do what we did last time and then transfer funds and build the wall. He would have had tens of billions yep. of dollars more to do it. Right. Instead, you have 1,600 pages that put limitations on the president that nobody fully understood because nobody could possibly have read it. But it was chock full of okay. limitations to slow the president down. I do, I'll get to you in a second, Tessa. I just want, well, I want yeah. to get Jason on the, on the specifics because, you know, you've been there. Uh, one argument I've heard is that while it may be true what Chris says and you seem to agree in terms of the restrictions, this is just up till September and that all of that lapses in September. So it's not the end of the world. They'll have to have additional clarifying language because there will be a food fight and more than a food fight, a legal fight as to whether or not that continues on in perpetuity. Now, we've heard Steve Scalise say, oh, no, this only happens for a short amount of time, but it shouldn't happen for any amount of time. And so I recognize that the president got just over a billion dollars to build the wall, but he could have gotten tens of billions of dollars by having the flexibility that Barack Obama and other presidents have had by transferring money between accounts without any additional appropriations. Tessa, when you look at all this um, and the way that this, this, this fight over the wall is just dominating politics, you know, the Democrats came in saying, you know, we're going to be all about health care and, and all this and you were for, you were, you know, tackling corruption and, okay, we may have a big sort of laugh about that given how they're funded. But anyway, um, <laughs> that was the message. We knew all these positive things. Instead, it's just all about this one issue that President Trump chose to put there. Do you think that, that in some senses the Democrats have walked into a political trap? Yeah, well, you know, they made it all about DACA, you know, uh, last year. It was all about DACA, 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 which is why a lot of Democrats like myself moved to the Independent Party, um, because you're not focusing on, you know, actual citizens in this country and what's going on on the other side of the wall. And so that's where the frustration is. And I think that's where the right and the left can agree. Um, you know, we disagree or have polar opposite opinions as we see, you know, we have these conversations. But I think people overall, they want someone to deliver on their campaign promises. I did not vote for President yeah. Trump. I was not a President Trump supporter. But I completely understand that if he promised people the wall, then people kind of want to expect to see the wall. The same <laughs> way with Barack Obama. I expected <laughs> things from Barack Obama and his Congress at that time did not support him as well. So my thing that I'm having is uh, my problem is I guess people are either unfamiliar because now they're paying attention. Every president has asserted some type of executive order. This is nothing new. This is nothing new under the sun. But because President Trump is doing it and because it is such a hot controversial issue, that's why now it's such a big deal to I have a president. I think you put it very well yeah. about people's expectations. Yeah. Last word, Jason, just looking forward. I mean, wh where can we be optimistic? It seems to me that in, a, in the sort of list of pots of money that the president is point and his team are pointing to, there is some money there, the drug enforcement and the treasury 
salary receipts or whatever it is, that actually he could spend right now and start making some progress. The president will make progress, but there were limitations in this bill on the number of ICE officers they could hand, uh, they could hire, uh, limitations on the number of border patrol agents that they could hire. I believe the president okay, promised. Okay, so what's the answer then? What, what should he be thinking about positively? The president has to propose a budget in February, mm -hmm. and the Congress is supposed to pass a budget in, in uh, you know, over the summer so that that is in place starting at the end of September. That okay. is the hope. But again, divided government, it's going to be very difficult to get there. But the president is on the right side of the issue and he will continue to pound on it. And America, I think, is on his side. I really do. Yeah. And let's just come back to I want to leave you with the point that I made at the beginning, which is in the end, he can't do it on his own. You've got to have more populist allies yeah. if that's what you want to see, if that's the change you want to see. Okay.